Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that this child would suffer and die, but rise to new life for the forgiveness of sins of all of the world. He saw the triumph of God's promise to bring salvation of God to all people in Christ Jesus. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of God Almighty, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to the completion in the day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10 through 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. 
For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what it is sown in it to be sprouting up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and the royal diadem in the hand of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord, according to St. Luke, the second chapter, the 22nd through the 40th verse. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what it said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was a righteous and devout man waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation and you have prepared this in the presence of all your people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and his mother were marveled at what it said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. So that thought for many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, in the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming at the very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to who all were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee and to their hometown of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message today is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Christ child of Bethlehem, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious and heavenly Father, Today we give thanks for your revealed word to us through your Apostle Luke. You chose Mary to be the mother of your only begotten son, Jesus. And through the lineage of your servant, David, you raise up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son, the husband of Mary, your chosen servant. So grant us your spirit on the this si other side of Christmas for us to live in your grace and follow the example of the faithful parenthood of Mary and Joseph by heeding your counsel and obeying your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our newborn Lord and Savior, we pray, amen. What have you missed most this year, 2020? When I look back at the 10 months, I'm still bummed out. I'm still waiting for Easter. And in fact, I'm waiting for Memorial Day and Fourth of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas wasn't much better this year. Even Santa Claus couldn't let kids jump up in his lap to tell him what they wanted for Christmas. You know, I wanted to see an end to all of the mysterious, strange, and frustrating junk that's happened this year. But here we are on the other side of Christmas and we're still waiting. What strange things are going to happen to us this next year? Or was 2020 just a bad dream? Just look back. We prepared for weeks with virtual Advent, uh, Advent services, virtual Advent candles, real lessons and carols, a nativity scene, artificial Christmas trees, decorations, trees, lights, real Christmas cards, real cookies, real special gifts. And we even prepared food for a family gathering. I hope you were able to be with your loved ones because we all wanted hope. Or let's at least pretend that things were going to get back to normal. But now the Christmas carols have been sung, the gifts have been given, chestnuts have roasted on the open fire, and COVID-19 has nipped at our noses. We're on the other side of Christmas, so now what? Thankfully, St. Luke's Gospel tells us about some wonderful things that happened in that temple on the other side of a Christmas over 2,000 years ago. It wasn't virtual. It's really about Jesus. Jesus was presented for dedication to God in accordance with Jewish tradition. He was Mary's firstborn son, so Mary also went to the temple to offer the sacrifice of purification. Not only was the first male child dedicated to God, but a faithful Jewish mother was also presented in the temple 40 days after the birth of her child. This account shows that she and Joseph were rather poor, rather because they could only afford the lowliest of sacrifices, two turtle doves. But here, St. Luke's Gospel tells us about a man named Simeon. He was an elderly, elderly man who had been promised that he would not die before he saw the promised Christ, the Messiah. And when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple, Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms and said those words that we use in our Lutheran liturgy, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for your word has been fulfilled. Mine eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. How did Simeon know that this little baby was the Messiah? There weren't likely any halos around their head. There wasn't a band of angels floating around inside of the temple singing hallelujahs. No, it was the power of the Holy Spirit who showed Simeon by faith who this child was. Our text said Simeon was a righteous and devout man. Today we know all about Jesus. 
We know this child is the Messiah, but Simeon didn't know. Jesus had been born just 40 days before in Bethlehem. The only way that Simeon would know the Christ child was this Messiah, was the same way he heard that earlier promise from God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen again to what Simeon's words, mine eyes have seen your salvation. What did he see? Obviously, first he saw the baby, but he also saw this specific baby is the Messiah, the Savior who brings salvation to the world. But Jesus was just a helpless 40-day-old child. He had never uttered a single word. He was totally dependent on Mary and Joseph, but Simeon knew from prophecy and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that this child would suffer and die, but rise to new life for the forgiveness of sins of all of the world. He saw the triumph of God's promise to bring salvation of God to all people in Christ Jesus. But then St. Luke offers this amazing addendum to the witness of Christ. He describes a totally unrelated, over 80-year-old widow lady named Anna, who also offers her witness of who the Christ child really is. She spent her days in the temple praying, so when she saw the baby Jesus, she exclaimed to everyone that was around her that the redemption of Israel is here. He is the Messiah. She saw by faith. Both Simeon and Anna just saw a tiny little baby, but what is more, they saw the coming fulfillment of our redemption in Christ Jesus. It's not likely that they ever saw Christ's suffering, death, and burial. It's clear because at their age they didn't hear that great news that he rose gloriously in, from the dead, proving our justification before God. But still they trusted in God's promise that the fulfillment of God's word from eons before was now come to life in the birth of God's own Son and the Son of Man born to Mary. That's the quiet, almost unnoticed things that happened on the first other side of the first Christmas. With all of the other things that have happened in 2020, we still, we still celebrate his birthday. Next, we'll spend the next 40 days and seven weeks on following his passion, his crucifixion, and his glorious, victorious resurrection in Easter again. So we have an advantage over Simeon and Anna. We know the rest of the story is true. We know Christ is victorious over sin and death and Satan. We know that we are joined together with him in our baptisms, in his death, and are joined to Christ in our new life in him. But they had an advantage over us. They received that be faith before it happened. Still much more of the world ignores and rejects this wonderful story of what Christ Jesus has done for them. Like Mary and Joseph faithfully bringing Jesus to be dedicated to God, we have also been brought to God as well. We were dedicated to God and given new life in the waters of holy baptism, where our new life is hidden in Christ and our salvation is freely given. Our salvation is certain and is sure. We still live in the here and now, but we await the day, like Simeon and Anna did, we will see the Christ face to face. By that same gift of faith, from God's Spirit, we know that we'll rise again when Christ comes and when He calls us to His embracing arms to live with Him in His kingdom forever. We receive Him now where He nourishes us with His very body and blood in the blessed sacrament. We stand forgiven when by His command our repentant hearts when He absolves us of our sin. Yes, today we stand on the other side of Christmas. Days ago, we celebrated his birth, and over 2,000 years ago, when God took on human flesh to become our Savior, my Savior, and the Savior of all of the world, we also stand on this side of Easter's past, where we heard the fullness of our redemption in him. Faith is a confidence of things hoped for 
and the evidence of things that are not yet seen. Such was the faith of Simeon and Anna. And with them we rejoice. Our salvation, our life, our joyous hopes in Christ is complete. Receive him as the Christ child, our gracious Savior. On this other side of Christmas, may the gift of faith as God brings us to the joy and the certainty of our Christ who is born, Christ who was crucified, Christ who is risen, and Christ who will come again to bring us to his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our newborn King, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Lord, teach us in your kingdom to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you've been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are looking for a congregation uh, in your area from the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, check with the website of Main Street Living for the congregation that is nearest you. I'm Roger Pavlo, the district president of the Mid-South District, and I send to you the greetings from all of our congregations around the United States and in our Synod, bringing you the good news of our Savior and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Your financial helps this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending the contributions of any amount to the address of the Main Street Living. For more information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including a link to the other LCMS websites, the congregation's location, and additional ways to donate to Main Street Living. Thank you again for joining us today and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station. God bless you.